1961 marks the 75th renewal of the Penn Charter Germantown Academy football game. This prep school classic enjoys the distinction of being the oldest uninterrupted schoolboy rivalry in the United States. Penn Charter has been the victor in 40 of the previous meetings with Germantown Academy. GA has won 23, and 11 games have been standoffs. The history of the series is replete with upsets, surprises, and exciting all-around play. As is the case with most tradition steep games, past performances mean very little. The team with the most desire generally wins this game. Penn Charter polishes its offensive blocking. Firing out in unison, the boys hit the charging machine with power and precision. The Quakers are coached by Ray Dooney, who is reviewing the game strategy with assistants Bill Maroney on the left and Bob Levy. The boys who will have to carry out the instructions are co-captains Chris Dunham, number 27, and John Davis, number 43. Germantown Academy, way back in 1887, won the initial contest between these two fine institutions. The 1961 season has been somewhat of a disappointment to both Germantown and Penn Charter. The Quakers have won just once, while GA is still looking for its first victory. The Reverend Mark Engdahl, GA's head coach, tells team captain Kirk Hansen and assistant coaches Walt Musel and Bill Resch that the season can be salvaged with a win over Penn Charter. It's homecoming day for both Germantown Academy and Penn Charter, and although this is the first time in eight years that this game will not decide the inter-academic league championship, the stands are filled with loyal alumni. Germantown Academy headmaster Donald Miller and athletic director Charles Houston are tense as kickoff time draws near. Referee Bill Reynolds summons the captains to midfield for the toss of the coin. GA's Kirk Hampson as visiting captain calls heads, and heads it is. Germantown Academy wins the toss and elects to receive. Co-captains Chris Dunham and John Davis wish their opponent well, and we're ready for the kickoff. The Diamond Jubilee game between Penn Charter and Germantown Academy is underway as Lou Burke kicks to Ed Sandburn. Sandburn brings the ball back out to the 19-yard line. On the first scrimmage play of the game, fullback Paul Woody skirts the right flank for a seven-yard gain. Make it third and two for GA now and they decide to take to the air. Hench Murray passes complete to Ed Sanborn, but the play loses a yard and GA will have to punt. Hench Murray gets the kick away and the ball is blown dead on the Charter 36. That's Barry Stark under center for the Quakers of Penn Charter. Stark's pass intended for Lynn Scarlett falls incomplete. Coach Bob Levy has spotted a flaw in the defense, and the information is relayed to Ray Dooney via telephone. It looks like this call was necessary as Stark fades deep before firing a screen pass to Lynn Scarlett. Scarlett falls in behind the convoy of blockers and sets sail to the end zone. It's a spectacular 63-yard scoring strike which gives Penn Charter a six to nothing first quarter advantage. Second period play finds GA rallying its forces. Hench Murray hurries around right end for a fast 14 yards.
It's Murray again on the same play, moving to the Penn Charter 24, where he recovers his own fumble. Murray is making Charter worry. Hench rolls out and whips a pass to Woody for a first down. Ray Dooney shouts encouragement to his defensive alignment as the Charter fans chant, hold that line. Hench Murray continues to haunt the Quakers. Paul Woody snares the pass, and it's goal to go from the Charter four. When Paul Woody fumbles a handoff, it's a big break for the Quakers, so they're right on top of him, and the play loses five. G.A. likes to throw that football. Murray connects with Woody on a screen, but the play fails to gain. Third and goal for G.A. Murray tries to pass for points, but the play is broken up in the end zone by Barry Stark. Mark Engdahl wants a touchdown badly, and he sends in a play right here. Hench Murray drops back quickly and lobs a pass over the onrushing charter lineman. Paul Woody snaps it up and romps into the end zone for what appears to be a touchdown. But there's the penalty on the play and the score is nullified. Here's that last play as seen from ground level. The penalty was for illegal receivers downfield as the over-anxious GA line moved ahead of the line of scrimmage to erase what looked like the equalizing score. At halftime, it's Penn Charter 6, Germantown Academy nothing. The second half begins with Lou Burke kicking off to Germantown. Howard Day returns the kickoff to the GA 25. Paul Turner packs a pitch out around left end for a five-yard pickup. There's a mix-up in the GA backfield and a loose ball follows. Len Scarlett wraps himself around the pigskin and Charter takes over on the Germantown 23. It's a big break for Charter and the boys go about the business of making it pay off as Lou Burke legs it to the GA-17. <laughs> Sophomore speedster Jim Lampy rips inside left end and he's off to the races. Lampy scores and Charter leads 12 to nothing. Once again, Lou Burke slams his foot into the football as he kicks off to G.A. Paul Woody's return is cut short at the 30-yard line. Charter's defense has adjusted to the Germantown attack, and Tom Porter is in fast to smother Paul Turner for no gain. Hence Murray in punt formation for G.A. Chris Dunham is downed on the Charter 32. Here comes the play of the day. Barry Stark steps to the firing line and launches a guided missile that comes to rest in the arms of Larry Hale. No one can nail Hale. He's long gone, en route to a 68-yard pass run touchdown. Hale gets a glad hand from everyone, and Penn Charter enjoys an 18 to nothing advantage. Lou Burke is a busy boy as he kicks off again. Howard Day reels off a rousing return as he churns through the charters for 44 yards. The third period ends with GA trailing Penn Charter, 18 to nothing. As the fourth period begins, GA is trying desperately to get on the scoreboard. Hence, Murray fumbles while attempting to pass, 
John Jones recovers and the ball is whistled bad on the Germantown three with Penn Charter in possession. The charged up Charter offense swings into action with Lou Burke skirting left end and over he goes for a touchdown. Barry Stark shoots for a two point conversion and his aim is perfect. Eric Martin pulls in the pass and Penn Charter pulls away to a 26 to nothing lead over Germantown Academy. That's Lou Burke kicking off for Penn Charter. Kirk Hampson, the GA captain, makes his way back to the Germantown 43. The Charter defense is putting tremendous pressure on the passer. Hench Murray is unable to throw but he does manage to pick up eight yards on the ground. This time, Murray fools the defense with a screen pass to Paul Turner, who carries for a first down on the Penn Charter 40. Germantown is battling to avoid a shutout. Howard Day teams up with Larry O'Brien, and the play is worth 14 yards. Howard Day looks for and finds another receiver in the person of Paul Woody, who moves the ball to the Charter 11-yard line. Three plays fail again, and on fourth down, Day's desperation pass falls incomplete as Penn Charter braces and takes over on downs. Gary Wilmore ignites a spark in the Charter attack as he gives the Hog Hide a handsome ride that covers a nifty 45 yards. Ray Dooney sends Chris Dunham into the game with the play. It's been an enjoyable day for the charter coaches to say the least. Dunham runs a sweep to the right. He turns the end, breaks into the open, and sprints 39 yards before he's bounced out of bounds on the one yard line. It's goal to go, and that's exactly where Chris Dunham is going as he scores the final touchdown of the day. Penn Charter, in its finest offensive performance of the season, crushes Germantown Academy 32 to nothing. Charter's Barry Stark is named the game's outstanding player and winner of the Geist Trophy to highlight the 75th renewal of America's oldest uninterrupted schoolboy rivalry.